What's up guys, this is John Hammond, still looking at Pico CTF 2017. Now moving into the reverse engineering category in level 2, the first challenge is called A Thing Called the Stack. So the challenge prompt is, a friend was stacking dinner plates and handed you this, saying something about a stack. Can you find the difference between the value of ESP at the end of the code and the location of the saved return address? Assume a 32-bit system, submit the answer as a hexadecimal number, blah 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 for example. Okay, so... I have to put a disclaimer here that I am probably not the best person to be trying to teach this or talk about this. Um, things may get a little bit fuzzy, but I'll explain it to my best understanding. And honestly, I am confident that you guys that are watching this that do know a little bit more um, are willing to share your opinion, share your voice, or just kind of correct me in the comments. Um, but I will do what I can to explain this uh, in, in the best way possible. So if you actually take a look at this... Uh, file that they provide for us. We can wget it, so we download it. It's just some assembly code, and we can open it up in Sublime Text, and we have this segment of code that we are to dissect and reverse engineer. So the challenge prompt is telling us, try to find the difference between the value of ESP and the location of the saved return address. So you may be wondering, what the heck is ESP? Well, in computer memory, in the, um, like, abysmal, uh, strange, weird, amorphous memory thing that we talk about in, in computers, that we're, how we store uh, program data and information. Um, there is a structure that organizes this memory and called a stack, and that stack is what we're looking at right now. And you're obviously doing very, very in-depth, uh, kind of on-the-wire, low-level stuff with it when you're working in assembly. And that stack has bits of information that are stored in what are called registers, and they may have some special registers as well. Uh, in a 32-bit system, those registers can be things like EAX or EBX, uh, ECX, etc., etc., and that is in 32-bit system, but... In a 64-bit system, you have similar registers, except they are bigger, obviously, uh, with more bits. So they're called R, R-A-X, R-B-X, etc. That is the preceding front instead of E-A-X. So just things to note, uh, at least as the basics that we're, that we're getting at. And along with these E registers, we also have the special things like E-B-P and E-S-P. So E-S-P is special in that it's, it's like a stack pointer. It is pretty much, if I try to develop something here on the side, it's a pointer, or like an arrow, as to what we, thing we are looking at on the stack. Because the stack is essentially a long line, or like a vertical, literally a stack, of uh, memory addresses, data, things. So, stack, function, frame. If you were to Google this, there is a ton of resources, but sometimes it's very confusing. So if we just actually look at some of the pictures of what stack frames look like, you get an idea. And you'll understand this a little bit more, probably in a better way than what I'm trying to explain here. Um, but the stack can be anywhere in memory, essentially, but it is a, essentially a piece of paper that has, just has a bunch of information on it. And okay, obviously I'm not going to have 8 bits or whatever correct number here, but just for the purpose of example and illustration, I want to say that lower addresses are here at the very bottom and higher addresses are here at the top. So any the stack and what you're looking at in the stack could be anywhere in that range of lower numbers or higher numbers. So when you invoke a function in your program, like if you're working in C or C++, uh, in a low-level programming language, in the stack, a new stack frame is created. And that stack frame has uh, specific decorators and things that denote that, okay, it is this, it is our stack frame that we're working for for this specific function. So it sets up uh, a frame by using EBP, or register specific anchor point, to denote the return address, or where the function will go back to once this function is complete. So that's what Pico CTF is referring to when they say the location of the saved return address. That is EBP, or our base pointer in the stack. And we can see this in the, in the hints here. So we can essentially start our own stack frame. Let's say, let's put it at, uh, oh, I was saying e EBP, and that should be ESP. Oh my goodness, I, I was wrong. <laughs> I said a whole wrong thing the whole time. ESP is what moves. EBP will not move because that is the anchor for whatever we are doing inside that specific stack frame anywhere in memory on the stack. Okay, so 
Now, ESP will move after we have pushed EBP onto the stack in some location. That push function is an operation in the stack or in assembly that will increment or essentially decrement in a strange way because the stack grows downwards. When we push something onto the stack, our ESP moves essentially down. So here, let me move all these. So that's our pointer. Our stack pointer moves down. We don't need to know that exactly in this case because we just need to know the difference. But so ESP is going to move down those four bytes or the size of a register every time we end up pushing something. So when we have this original push, we kind of have that on the stack and then we move down. So we've got four bytes that will essentially move on and EBP will take up that space, these four bytes. So now ESP is waiting at 12 when all of these other lines have been filled up by that base pointer. So now our stack pointer has moved the very top of this EBP, so that's taken up four bytes. The move operation, that's not actually going to affect our stack pointer. It's not going to change the location of what we're pointing at or, or trying to indicate in the stack. It's just simply setting, essentially setting uh, a value to something. It's like kind of setting a variable in a programming language, like it's saying x equals 10. But in an interesting way, and I want to point this out to you, what we're looking at right now, this is assembly code, but it's written in an interesting way because assembly code can come in two different flavors, uh, like AT&T as one syntax and Intel as another syntax. So you can denote the differences by seeing, okay, AT&T has dollar signs denoting uh, or preceding a kind of a constant, it typically has percent signs in front of a register or anything specific. Um, and those kind of add up. It makes it not the prettiest thing to look at. Also, a very, very strange thing for Intel and AT&T is the way that you read it. So the direction of operands is different in Intel and AT&T. In Intel, you look at something like the move uh, operator or operand, and that says that, okay, EAX will now equal ECX, essentially, um, in, in this example, just what we're looking at here. However, you read it from left to right for Intel syntax, like X equals 10, as we saw in our example over on the side here, but AT&T, it's kind of backwards. You're saying, okay, I want 10 to equal X. You read it the other way around. So uh, Intel syntax is kind of what we are used to and is uh, what I would say better and is, is a better option for reading um, assembly code. So interesting thing to, to keep in mind. But we know that that move operation will not change anything about our stack pointer. But since we're going to see more push operations, we'll actually subtract down, again, four bytes and lower things in, in the memory that we're seeing here. So we can subtract again because we know we're going to get up to 20. Uh, subtracting four bytes, we're doing more of this operation. So by the time you see, okay, we've done four operations, four push statements that are going to like move by a difference of four bytes because that's the size of a register. So in total, we'll have a 16 bytes difference between the start of EBP and our ESP, our stack pointer. Again, I'm really sorry about having that labeled wrong when I was originally mentioning these. Now, the next line is sub or subtract. So assembly sub. And again, be sure to Google this. Be sure to understand it. Be sure to um, just do your own research because that's the best way to learn is just doing your own uh, self-learning. So that subtraction is subtracting from ESP. So we know that, okay, on the stack, we'd move down again, whatever this value is. And this number may be different from your challenge from my challenge. That's okay. Again, that's Pico CTS randomization. So we know that this difference is also going to be impact move will not do anything to it. So now we've got all the pieces that will change our ESP and our EBP difference. Let's open this up in Python and let's say, okay, we know we're going to start with that 16 difference from all the push statements and then we're going to subtract that value in hex. So we'll put those together, find the difference and we have 264 in decimal, but now let's convert that to hex because that's what the challenge wants it in. 0x108. Cool. Go ahead and submit this and I've already solved this because I tried to record this earlier and realized my audio wasn't on, so I got really upset. Um, but 
that was the correct answer for this one. And again, those numbers may be different in your case, but that is what I wanted to showcase, a little bit of that understanding of a thing called the stack. I hope my uh, <laughs> sublime text demonstration was kind of okay, and uh, that, sure, I'm going to be using this vertical line as our play pretend stack, and the stack frame that's created for a function may be anywhere in memory, but again, from what you see on pictures on Google, from your own reading and understanding, you can use EBP as a reference point to access other variables, like local variables for the function that are created in the function, or arguments or parameters that were passed to it, etc. Um, and it's all based off that base pointer in the stack. Cool. All right, I want to give a special shout out for the people that support me on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. I cannot thank you enough. That's why I do this. Uh, $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 a month will give you early access to anything that I create and release on YouTube. Hey, if you did like this video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment. Let me know what I did wrong. Let me know what is a better way to explain this, etc. Uh, I'm a little bit fuzzy on the stack explanation, so please, I would appreciate your constructive criticism. If you're willing to subscribe and please have out with us on the discord server link in the description and if you're willing to check me out on patreon i would really really appreciate it thanks see you in the next video